Good morning. Thank you. Bev, do you have a mic? We welcome all of you who are here and those who will be watching later on YouTube or DVD. Um, Bev needs to say hello to you all. Hello. Good morning. God bless you and love you. You didn't know you could hear back through YouTube, did you? <laughs> Oh dear, we hope that those of you watching on YouTube will interact with us, leave us some comments, like the video, share it, whatever you'd like to do. And for all of us, let us join in prayer as we turn our hearts to worship. This morning, Lord, we want everything to be for your glory. We want our thoughts, our words, our songs, our church, our community, our resources, our time, our lives, all to be for you. Everything ours is yours, and we come together to declare this to be so on this holy day of thanksgiving. Bless our time together with your holy presence. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and join me in our call to worship. In deep gratitude, we come to worship God. We recognize God as the source of all goodness. All good gifts come from the Spirit of God. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness are all of God. We come with grateful hearts, not for things, but for who God is. We gather to show our gratitude in song and prayer. Good morning. Good morning. Our gospel reading this morning will be Matthew 6, 25 through 33. It will be found on page 6 of your New Testament in the Pew Bible. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you grow why why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father, Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the word of the Lord. Okay. You may be seated. And would join me in the unison prayer. O oh God, so often we take you for granted. We take for granted that you will answer our prayers, that you will heal us and make us whole. We take for granted that you love us. Forgive us for not appreciating your grace and presence in our lives. Help us to be more thankful. Give us faith to see you in everything and everyone around us, so that we may be truly grateful. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our epistle reading will be 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 7. And that will be page 208 in your pew Bible. 
I urge then, first of all, that request, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men. The testimony given in its proper time, and for this purpose I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, and a teacher of the true faith to the Gentiles. And this is the word of the Lord. Hey, Amy. What, Kenny? Why do turkeys go gobble gobble? Um. Want a hint? No, I do not want a hint. You're getting cold, Amy. Well, I still don't want a hint. You might as well just tell me why. Because they have terrible table manners. <laughs> That was a terrible joke, Kenny. You think so? I thought it was a good joke. Well, it wasn't, especially with Thanksgiving right around the corner. Around the corner? I thought it was on Thursday. You know what I mean. Oh, well, I do love Thanksgiving. Really? I thought you only liked Christmas. Yeah, Christmas too, but Thanksgiving has so much meaning. Yes, it does, Kenny. But I didn't know that you knew that. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, gravy, candied sweet potatoes, pumpkin pie, and my favorite, cranberry sauce. <sighs> Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. I really think it has more meaning than just food. You're absolutely right. There's football. <laughs> and, and don't forget, people, New Orleans played Buffalo on Thursday. Ay, ay, ay. You know, it means something other than that. Okay, what else is there besides food, more food, and football? I mean, Christmas is still a month away, you know. I don't mean Christmas either. Okay, so what are we talking about? I'm talking about what Thanksgiving is really about. Okay, you're confusing me. I already told you what Thanksgiving is all about. Food and football. What else is there? You know, you are being really impossible today. Why do you think it's called Thanksgiving? That's too easy. It's called Thanksgiving for all the things we are giving for food and football. Oi. Okay, that may be part of it, but I still think there's a little more to it than that. Huh? What do you mean there's more to than that? I mean, we are giving thanks to the Lord for all of the blessings of the year. Yeah, like, but Don't you dare say football again, food again. Okay, I won't, but I understand your point. You don't understand it? It's an old story. It dates back hundreds and hundreds of years. Well, I hope it doesn't take hundreds of years to tell. Ah. <sighs> It doesn't, and I can give you a really short version. Okay, congregation. I think Amy's going to tell us anyway. So everybody get ready for your naps.
after pie. <laughs> the first Thanksgiving was in Charles City, right across the ri river from Hopewell. Really? Yes, and the set settlers were thanking the Lord for their survival. Everyone was invited, even members of the local Indian tribes. Wow, real Indians, like Tanto and the Lone Stranger? <sighs> yes, real Indians. Everyone got together and had a huge feast, and they thanked God for all of their blessings. And after they ate, they sat around the campfire and watched football. I know the Dallas, and Chuck, this is for you. I know the Dallas Cowboys were playing. <sighs> no, Kenny, they didn't have football teams back then. They didn't have TVs either. And come to think of it, they didn't have electricity either. Whoa. No electricity? Nope, not a bit. Well, then I know what I'm thankful for. I'm afraid to ask. What's that, Kenny? I thank God that we have electricity, TV, and football games. Of course you are. That's kind of selfish, don't you think? Uh, yeah, you're probably right. Here's what I'm really thankful for. I thank God for your friendship and for everybody who comes to this church. Well, that's more like it, Kenny. And I'm thankful that God gave us Jesus to save us from sin. Hey, Amy, what's your side? No. What side of turkey had the most feathers? Oh, Kenny, I don't know. What side? The outside, silly. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Some days are harder than others. <laughs> Goodbye for now, everyone. Have a nice Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. We will be back to see you in January. Be safe, and especially remember to be thankful. Pastor Barry, would you please close us in prayer? I will do that, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for so many things that you have given us, not just our food and football, but also so many comforts and just things that we take for granted. You are so good to us, and we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. It is good. It is Thanksgiving week. It is also Christ the King Sunday, which is why the paraments this morning are white, besides the fact that we seem to have too many funerals here. <laughs> Cindy doesn't have to change the clause quite as often. Christ the King Sunday is the last Sunday after Pentecost. We have finally finished the season of green, and next week we'll begin Advent, as Bill alluded to. The sermon series for Advent is going to be Come Home for Christmas, and it talks about different meanings behind that. But today, some of you will remember parts of this sermon because you were at Wallace Wesleyan, but not the entire part. Some of it's different. Gratitude and salvation are both decisions. Now, salvation, we talk about the ABCs of admitting we're not perfect, believing that Jesus is God's Son who died for us, and C, committing our lives to following Christ's example by serving one another. That's basically a one-time decision, although it takes the rest it. of our lives. Gratitude, however, I think is something we need to decide on almost moment by moment, there are good things and bad things that happen in all of our lives. And which ones you choose to focus on will determine a lot of how you see your life. If you think only about the good things and just let the bad ones pass, life can be a lot simpler. But it's not easy to do. Those negative things usually eat at us. Our 
Culture likes to have us focus on the things we're missing, the things we need to buy, usually. If you buy this, you will be happy. They, they show all of the models who are just in a wonderful state. And you think, oh, if only I had whatever it is. Well, that's what they want us to think. But God tells us that we should store up our treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy. Now, those wonderful new cars we like to get, guess what? Which one of them will probably go first, rust or moths? Maybe both, who knows? But around here, typically the rust, yes, eats them pretty quickly. Yeah, watch some of Eric Obrachta's videos and uh, people who comment from the south say, I've never seen a vehicle look that bad, and it was like three years old. You know? <laughs> the things are not what's important to us. But I think often we forget how blessed we are. And I, so I'd like to take you on a little trip around the world, so to speak. Give us a little bit of a different perspective on our lives today here in this country. We would all say we're probably lower middle class. We're not the rich people. We're not like a Bill Gates. And yet, how many of you have food in your refrigerator? You have clothes that you're wearing, thank God. <laughs> And <laughs> I was going to say, then we will be thankful for Shelley. <laughs> Just as Chuck is, I know from his posts on Facebook, yes. <laughs> I was trying to figure out where you came after the 57, the grandkids, and was, I, yeah, some, somewhere down in that list, yeah. So if you have food, clothes, and a dry house to go home to, you are richer than 75% of the world. Three quarters of our world today lacks either food, clothing, or shelter. Three quarters. After all of the missions we have done and the money that has been sent, of course, some places it's a recurring issue because of famine or hurricanes or whatever it might be. But if you have those three things, you are richer than 75% of the world. How many of you have $10 that you could part with? <laughs> yeah, you might as well go for 20, Chuck, if you're going to borrow, you know. Do you realize that in America, if you have $10 and no debt, you are richer than 15% of Americans? <laughs> Most people in the U.S. have a negative net worth. They owe more than they have. Yeah, I was going to say, electric bills and stuff keep climbing. Credit card debt is unbelievable, and savings is down. If you have $10 to your name, and we look at it globally, if you have just $10, you are part of the 8% of the world's wealthy. You are in the top 8% if you just have $10 to your name. Uh, I don't know about you, but $10 does not make me feel wealthy. But when we go around the world and look at what the situation is, we are blessed. I'd like to give you a few different statistics that, I don't know, they kind of blew my mind. They seem almost unbelievable. This one you may have heard, the top 1% of the population has the same amount of money as the other 99%. Those are the folks who have lots of money. 1% has as much money as the rest of the 99. It's 
It's about 48.2% is their actual number of the world's wealth is in the hands of just 1% of the population. And then comes the part, is that 1% the ultra-rich? Because if you make more than $50,000 a year, you're part of the 1%. Our median income here in Steuben County, which I think of as kind of little Appalachia, our median income is 52000 That means half the people in Steuben County are part of that 1%. We need to know them better, don't we, Deb? <laughs> it's just kind of an interesting thing to wrap your head around how poor other places are that the median income of Steuben County is higher than the worldwide average. $10 a day is the norm. That means about 3,650, wow, I'm good at math this morning, (laughs) dollars is the norm around the world. 80% live on less than $10 a day. 80% of the world. We go in and buy groceries. I don't know if you can walk out of tops for $10 with anything. A bag of chips and a package of bologna, maybe? (laughs) It's just, it, it blows my mind to think about how the rest of the world lives. And it takes me back to when I started teaching. Our music teacher in the elementary school was away in Africa for a year working in missions. When she came back the next year, she could not adapt back to our society. She said, I've seen what people live with. I cannot deal with the waste and the expectations here. And she went back to teach music in Africa, helping them to write hymns in their native music style, which I think is kind of fascinating. The median income in global population is less than $10,000 a year. So if you earn more than actually $9,733 in a year, you're doing better than half the people in the world. You might spend more on coffee than what most people have to live on for the day. (laughs) Well, you might be tea, yeah. About a third of the people on the earth live on less than $2 a day. And then the next figure blew my mind because I stopped to think about how many of this is. 1.2 billion people. That's B with a billion. B with a bi- billion with a B. With a B. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Um, I caught it from Gary. <laughs> who, who caught it from us in the first place. 1.2 billion live on less than a dollar and a quarter a day. I don't know what you can do with a dollar and a quarter. I think you can buy a package of baby carrots. So there's your day. Save a lot, yes. That does make a difference, yes. I think that's what I got mine for the other day. It was a dollar and a quarter. Most Americans spend about 10% of their income on food. Sound about right? All right. Most people in the world spend between 60 and 80% of their income on daily food. Think about that. If you're earning that little, you've got to spend it on food to stay alive. How much money do you think Americans will spend on Christmas gifts? More than they need to is probably a good answer. $465 billion. Now, 
Now, just as a comparison, how much money do you think the U.S. sends to other countries in foreign aid? It's really hard to get a good figure because it's different agencies and sometimes it's donation, not donations, but it's sent to non-government organizations or it's sent to American contractors working someplace. But the best estimate I came up with was about $40 billion. We will spend 10 times that much on Christmas gifts. And that $40 billion is only 1% of our federal budget. Probably less than that now, because, well, depending on how many of these trillion-dollar plans you count in the budget, I guess. Children in rich countries, we'll say first-world countries, face a, a 1 in 165% chance of dying by age 5. One child out of 165. In some places, their chances are one in six. So if you had children and they survive to adulthood, they're highly unusual in the world. That does not count the days you would have willingly sent them somewhere. <laughs> then this one, this last piece, is a daily number of children who die mostly from preventable diseases and lack of nutrition. 29,000 children every day. 29,000. That's not counting the ones that we willingly kill before their birth. Now, that's not meant to be a downer. All of those numbers just kind of blow our minds. It's not meant to make anyone feel guilty because we have more than much of the world. What I want to happen from this is to understand better what all we have to be thankful for. We are truly blessed to live in this country in this time. Is it perfect? Oh, no. But we are so much better off than much of the world. I also hope that as we look at this picture of the world, it reminds you of what you have as resources that you may be able to help someone else, especially as we move into this Christmas season. When Thursday rolls around, are you just going to be thankful for Kenny's food and football? <laughs> Which are good things to be thankful for, don't get me wrong. But we have a lot more to be thankful for. I remember Dottie telling the story of her mother, who was a German immigrant, so English was a little rough for her yet. One Thanksgiving, she offered the blessing, and she said, Dear God, we thank you for this food, even though we had to buy it. <laughs> and I think sometimes we get wrapped up in that, look what I've done. I earned the money for this. I made this happen. But where did your life come from? Where did the breath that got you up this morning come from? Where did the health that allowed you to work, where did the economy that made the job, how is that all put together? That's God at work. Those are God instances, and often we take the credit for them. So I hope this week we can indeed say it is good to give thanks to God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we are reminded of just how blessed we are, May it turn us to you to say thank you. May we live a life of gratitude, not just one day during the holidays, but truly throughout our lives, every day, in every place. Remind us that you are good all the time. In Jesus' name, amen. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we have 
and all that we are, that we may praise you not with our lips only, but with our whole lives, turning the duties, the sorrows, and the joys of all our days into a living sacrifice to you, through Jesus our Savior. Amen. We join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you receive our benediction? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May thankfulness rise up within you, not just during this season, but day after day, from early morning until you retire for the night. And finally, may the grace, peace, and love of God protect, defend, and empower you to run with perseverance the race marked out before you. God bless our food and our time of fellowship together. In Jesus' name, amen.